Dutch air crash investigators have resumed work in eastern Ukraine where flight MH17 came down last summer. They've promised results by October. Meanwhile, some media outlets have been conducting their own probes. One of the most recent was by Reuters, which talked to witnesses in a village near the crash scene. And here's an extract from the article. When interviewed by Reuters, Fedotov, the witness who described the wiggling rocket, at first said on camera that it was fired from territory held by the Ukrainian army. Later, off camera, he said it was launched from a nearby rebel area. Asked why he had originally said the opposite, he said it was because he was afraid of the rebels. Some serious allegations that on camera reports, off camera banter. RT went to the area to talk in person to the witness from the Reuters article and film everything he has to say. Когда за Боинг мы разговаривали, как было, я ему так сказал. А вот это вот без камеры там всю эту мутату, которую он уже сам придумал, это ложь, потому что я без камеры вообще на эту тему мы не разговаривали. Мы просто разговаривали о жизни. Если статья выходит, как бы хотя бы ознакомил, что а так без моего согласия даже не ну, хотя бы наброски там какие-то дал it turned out that the Reuters correspondent did contact Mr. Fedotov after their interview but not to talk about the article первым что он спросил он спросил нет ли у меня неприятности я был удивлен этим от чего у меня было могут быть неприятности если я такого как сказать то что было я сказал mm -hmm. а когда уже мне позвонили друзья и сказали что где-то на каком-то канале они видели и сказали, что я сказал на камеру одно, а после камеры сказал противоположное. Mm -hmm. Вот это я тогда уже понял, почему он у меня так спросил. Это его домыслы, или ему так было выгодно, и я не знаю, какую он цель преследовал. The official investigation into the MH17 tragedy led by Dutch experts is still ongoing. A conclusive report is expected to be released later this year. The investigators are appealing to the media not to speculate on the downing of MH17 in East Ukraine until the final document is published. We sent a request to Reuters asking for a copy of the interview, but didn't get an answer. Meanwhile, the Russian Foreign Ministry has expressed doubts about the credibility of the report. It's not the first time a questionable report has caused a media storm. Over the last few months, some Western and Ukrainian media outlets insisted that prosecutors had officially confirmed flight MH17 had been drowned by a Russian missile. In light of this, RT contacted the investigator's office for confirmation. I'm not, I'm not familiar with these uh, reports, but I can say uh, for sure that they are not correct. We are still investigating uh, the, uh, the, uh, the plane crash. Uh, we are not uh, yet uh, ready to, to take any conclusion. Political analyst Neil Clark says a lot of Western media don't bother checking the facts before posting their stories. We only can think back at the headline of the Rupert Murdoch-owned newspaper, The Sun, the day after the tragic MH17 disaster, and the headline was Putin's missile. No evidence at all. It was it was uh, implying that this was a missile that had been personally made and fired by President Putin. That's the kind of low level of uh, reporting, so-called reporting, that's been going on in the Western media. So it's very sad, really. Journalistic standards have slipped to a great a great deal. It's been propaganda instead of facts. I and mean, it's facts that we want. You know, we should want to know the, the full truth about what happened to this plane and who actually, uh, you know, what brought it down. It seems that a lot of people in the West were only interested in this story as a means of blaming Russia in order to justify more sanctions on Russia. That's their only interest in this story. They're not interested really in finding out what happened. They're only interested in using it in their campaign uh, to demonize Russia.